Hey everybody, I'm Jason Mefford, and I'm back with Brad Miller. And uh, today, woohoo! Here we go. Raise the roof. Woo -hoo -hoo. Right. Uh, today, we wanted to talk a little bit about sharing our stories and lessons. And when we're using the hour, right? This is the general third person, not just necessarily Brad and my experiences or stories, because obviously that's what we're sharing here on the podcast. Uh, but just how all of us really. Uh, can do that. And so to, to kind of tee this up, Brad has volunteered to share a few experiences um, that he's had this last week. And, and the reason, again, I'm going to kind of warn everybody up front, the reason why we're kind of going through this is it shows a lot of what we've been talking about and how Brad kind of received a message that we want to share today and something important for him but it 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 kind of comes in a lot of these different ways that we've been we've been talking about it. So so Brad, kind of take take it away. I know we just talked about it, and it's like, damn, I wish we would have hit record. <laughs> but we're going to talk about it again. So we'll, we'll we'll make it we'll make it fancy this time too. So um, earlier this week, so Sunday night, I had a dream, which is not uncommon. We dream all the time, every night. Um, I've been remembering them more and more so there's that uh, but this one particularly I, re I remembered uh pretty clearly and in this dream there were four basically we started with four people there was me my daughter um, another individual and his daughter now this other individual is someone um who some of you may I'm not, i won't give his name on here but some of you may know someone like this um he talks a lot about neurodiversity uh, he himself is as uh, neurodiverse and talks about the benefits, the advantages of it, but also the kind of the struggles and kind of how he deals with it. Um, and he shares his experience with, you know, with with this neurodiversity um, through books. He's he's written a couple of books, a children's book for it. He does presentations and things like that on it and, and talk and talks on it. Um, and so he was in this dream, his daughter, me and my daughter, and we were going out to dinner. And we stopped at a fancy kind of a fancy sit down restaurant and sat down and, and went in and he got his table and we all sat down. Um, at some point, other members of my family came into the restaurant as well and sat with us. Um, one of those particular per people was a nephew of mine. Um, and this nephew of mine, he is on the spectrum. So he has neuro neurodiverse himself. And he actually sat, so there was, I was setting the table with, you know, the four of us that originally came in and then another table next to us um, set the rest of my family. And at the end of that table was this nephew and my, this, this individual, this gentleman leaned over to my nephew and said to him, I can feel the fuzzies too. And my nephew says, you can. Um, and I could say, kind of get the feeling that he kind of acknowledged, you know, was he able to tell that, you know, he had the neurodiversity going on within him. Um, and it was helping my nephew feel accepted, feeling like, hey, you know what? He understands me. He gets it too. Um, and that was the end of that dream. Um, you know, I woke up and I was like, okay, you know, that that was interesting. I'm not sure what uh, I'm supposed to be taking out of that, but Okay. You know, so I get up and get my daughter ready and get her on the bus and everything else. And I come and sit down to my computer and open up my email. And one of the first emails I open up to is from this individual, this gentleman that was in my dream. And uh, in the in the email that he wrote and sent out to his, you know, his um, his community, he talks about the fact that he is starting a new venture. And that venture is to share um his stories and to help uh, companies, large corporations, help them institute uh, neurodiversity within them. Talk about the benefits for them and how they can actually make that a part of who they are in their culture. Okay, so again, sharing his experiences and trying to make this more of a normal sort of thing. So I'm like, huh, okay. I had a dream about this individual. And now one of the first things I see in the morning is an email from him. Hmm, interesting, right? Still don't know anything else about it. Maybe it's just a you know a coincidence, you know who know you know who knows, um, but kind of went on with my day. Okay, 
So a little bit later that morning, so this is Monday morning, um, I decided I wanted to go out hiking. The weather about here has been beautiful. It's been sunny. Um, it's what We're having a false spring. So it's in the 50s and nice and sunny. Here probably next week it'll snow for a week or so just to balance things out. But in the meantime, it's really nice out right now. And so I'm like, I'm going to go outside. I need to get out. I need to go hiking. I've not been out really since the new year. So I went and went hiking. And um, I went out to this area that I like to go to. Uh, there was no one else there, so it was just me. Um, and there's a nice waterfall. Um, and one of the nice things, because we've had a lot of rain recently, there was quite a bit of, wa of, of water coming through the waterfall. So I kind of sat there um, the, on a large rock, listened to the water, um, just kind of meditated, sat in some silence, and you know, just had a good time. All fun and dandy, then it's time to leave. All right. I'm like, all right, I'm good to go. Start walking back to the car. And as I'm walking back to the car, I have an insight. Uh, and to the point where I actually pulled out my phone and started a voice memo to record this because I wanted to make sure that I, I was able to uh, get it out and didn't forget it. Because I realized as I was starting to say that it was coming to me that this was important. And this is something that I needed to, to, to keep. So the insight was this. One of the reasons why we're all here is because we have lessons that we need to learn. And I know we've talked about this on previous episodes. And we do, we learn these lessons through experiences. You know, um, the, the circumstances of our life, the things that happen to us, the people in our lives, all of that play into the lessons that we're supposed to be learning. So for example, um, someone is sick in the hospital. The lessons that they learn may be about dealing with fear, maybe about being able to heal themselves. Um, you know, whatever the lessons they may come, those are things that they learn through the experience of being sick, you know, being in a hospital or whatever. Now, there are a lot of other people out there who are here on earth to learn those similar lessons. But not all of us are going to have the experience or the opportunity of being in the hospital like that. So the way that they learn those lessons is through learning from the experiences of those who have done it. You know, so people who have said, hey, I was in the hospital. Here are the lessons I learned when I was sick and sharing those with others. And really, that's kind of why and what makes kind of hit me is that's why we do this podcast, really. It's because there are things that I am learning. And I'm sure, Jason, there's things that you are learning through this podcast and things that we're learning in the background about spirituality and, and kind of evolving and the lessons that we have ourselves and the experiences that we're going through to get those lessons are not the same experiences that you, that you as a listener are going to have, you know, access to, you know, um, you know, you're not, you don't have the same background as we do. You don't have the same people around your lives as we do. And so by sharing these experiences, by sharing the lessons that we've learned, we're actually helping you to learn these lessons as well um, in a way that you can't get because you don't have the same experiences um, that we did to get them in the first place. Yeah, and I think it's also, you know, that's that's one of the great reasons for being able to do it because, I mean, obviously we're all here to learn right and and what what i learn what i share that helps other people learn as well right just like right now brad just told that story you know everybody you know we're, and we're going to dig in and kind of talk about some of these different things about it right so you can learn from it but i think also you know another important reason for us to share is so that people can feel accepted Right. If you go back to that dream, when when that man told your nephew, you know, I can feel the fuzzies, he's like, oh, you can. Right. And so I think I think a lot of times, <clears throat> you know, many of us are going through different experiences and we feel like we're the only ones that are going through it. And we must be weird because we're experiencing these things that are different, you know. And so somebody like that who, uh, you know, is neurodiversity that's the new term right I, 
I'm not as politically correct as I should be, but neurodiversity, um, you know, for somebody with different neurodiversity, um, they they see, they feel things different than other people do. And so when most of the people are, are sensing or feeling something different than you are, sometimes it can make you feel like you're you're weird or you're different, right? Right. But mm -hmm. there's but as as we share, as that man shares, um, you know, people can realize that they're not alone. They're they're not so different. There's other people that feel like they do, that have experienced things like they do, right? And so I think there's a lot of a lot of great benefit from that. Uh, but I wanted to kind of, you know, dig in because I think I think part of, you know, this experience that Brad has just shared with you ties together so many of the things that we're trying to share here, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so one that that I, I I will just hit it. It was towards the end, but I wanted to hit on it too because you said you had an insight. Yep. Okay. So, and again, you know, a lot of the things that we talk about on here, words are so inadequate to <laughs> actually describe the experiences. But I wanted to get into that maybe a little bit more to, and we've talked about this on other episodes too, but, you know, what does that mean to you, Brad? What, when you say I had an insight, what was that like kind of in some more detail? So maybe other, other people again can, um, can realize or see, because I think sometimes we're all looking for messages from the universe. They come to us in different ways. But I think sometimes we're getting answers all the time. We just aren't recognizing them too. Yeah. Right. So what is that? How did that, how did that look for you? You know? Yeah. So for me, it was a, a knowing just kind of all of a sudden I was like, it was just kind of like, boom. And the idea that the thoughts, the, the words kind of started coming and that's why I was like, I, I need to get this recorded. I need to record this. I need to get my phone out. I need to make sure that I'm talking these things. I started to say these things out, um, you know, that I was, that I was understanding and I didn't want to lose them because I didn't know where they came from. Like it wasn't something that all that I was kind of like trying to logically put together. It just was kind of there all of a sudden in my head and started to come out. And so I needed to like, I got to get this recorded so that I don't, I don't miss, I don't lose it. Yeah. Well, because I think a lot of people, again, this is, we've talked about knowing before, right? That's mm -hmm. how I get a lot of, a lot of uh, my knowledge or inspiration, whatever you want to call it, are from knowings where all of a sudden I'm, I'm not even thinking about it, but all of a sudden it's like something is planted in my brain and I just know it. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, a lot of people are looking for or expecting to hear a voice, let's say like, <laughs> Brad, this is the universe. And pull out your phone because we're I'm, we're ready to tell you something important <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like no it, that didn't happen like that you don't hear like this audible most i mean sometimes you can sometimes people do mm -hmm. but you know that insider that knowing often it just comes in and all of a sudden it's like how do i know that i don't know but i know that right mm -hmm. or or you feel like like words were just put into your brain but they didn't go through your ear canal Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's, you know, and again, that's one of those things. If, if you're not thinking about it and you're giving yourself space, you just gone out on a hike, you just done some meditation, your mind was clearer. Now, all of a sudden you've kind of tuned in, <clears throat> cleared the static out of your mind. And now the universe can drop that message in there for you. Right. Right. And that's the way that it works a lot of times. It's not when we're struggling and trying to figure something out. It's when we get quiet and all of a sudden something comes in. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I know when you and and, and you kind of jumped over this, but I wanted to kind of highlight, too, you know, is is we've talked before about coincidences or synchronicity. Right. Where a lot of people think, oh, that's just a coincidence. Oh, that's just whatever. Right. And, you know, when we do that, we tend to place judgment on the particular situation, but I didn't hear you say that you said, Oh, that's 
interesting, right? So again, when you saw the email, you didn't say, oh my gosh, that email means I'm supposed to do this, 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 <laughs> this right? Oh my gosh, I'm, I, I need to sign up for this, whatever. Or I need to do whatever, right? You, you, you saw it as just an event and, uh, oh, isn't that interesting? You know, I know who this person is, but they've never been in my dreams before. Oh, isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting that the, you know, the morning after the dream, you get an email from him. Oh, isn't that interesting? Right. Of, of trying to not place that judgment on it and just let things kind of unfold as they need to unfold. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was, I was trying to, yeah, careful not to give any meaning to, to it. Um, you know, I, you know, I say I had the dream and kind of so laying in bed as I woke up afterwards, I was like, all right, what, what's this meaning? Like what's, what's going on with this? And some of it is playing it back in my head again um, to, to make sure that I remember it. Um, you know, cause if I, if I don't kind of get it kind of cemented down in kind of my memory, then chances are it might go away. And so I was trying to kind of recall the the details of it. What do I remember about it? And he got to get through it. Um, but again, nothing jumped out. It was like, Hey, this is what this means. You know, I've had, some dreams that, you know, I, oh, I like, oh, I know what that means. Like, I know what that's supposed to be. And this one, I'm like, don't know. You know, it's again, I, I don't know why this individual is in the dream. Maybe just because I saw uh, something on social media that he's posted recently. And so he, that kind of put him in my mind, top of mind. I don't know. Um, but again, I wasn't going to let, like you said, judgments or any meaning attached to that. Um, because things coming through dreams, that kind of stuff is not logical. It's not something that I can process logically and come up to, you know, A plus B leads to C sort of a situation, um, which for a lawyer is really hard sometimes to, <laughs> to, to do. <laughs> um, so that's kind of what we're taught is, you know, you're going to be logical. You need to have evidence and, you know, a plus B leads us to C and that's how we decide things and all. And so we just got to work it out. You just got to think harder and right. you got to, you know, you know, write it, write it down and do like, you know, a T account it's, or different things, you exactly. know, on a piece of paper and, you know, use all yep. of these kind of things, but that's, that's not how, how right. it works in, yep. in, yeah. And like you said, it's, it's those times when we, but you were showing up, right. You were, you were not placing judgment because I think, again, that's usually when the door kind of slams down mm -hmm. too, right? Is if something comes along and we, oh, well, I know what that means and this is what it means, then, you know, I'm, I'm assuming again, you know, there's thousands of these beings around us that are like, oh, well, Jason thinks he knows what it is. So we'll just let him think he knows what it is and we won't tell him the rest of the answer, <laughs> you know? Versus if, if, if I can do, and again, I mean, it's hard. I'm training myself just like you're training yourself to say, you know, oh, isn't that interesting? Or, huh, you know, when, when things like this come along, instead of trying to place some meaning or some judgment upon it as well. And, and, and sometimes, you know, we, it takes us a while to figure it out. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there's, there's things that'll happen to me, you know, like this last week I had, you know, it's not unusual at night to see coyotes here, to hear them howling in the pack. It's unusual to see one in the middle of the day, just trotting down the middle of the road. Again, it, it, it can happen, but it's, you know, and I've seen two do that this last week, right? Which again, means some, you know, joker coyote medicine in my life. Maybe, maybe not. You know, again, I, I can't, I can't look at that and say, oh, because I saw a coyote, something, something bad is going to happen or something, you know, tricky is going to happen. Uh, because again, that's me placing judgment on it, right? Because I know that it could be a whole lot of other things, you know, being, Beings that shape shift often show up in the form of animals too. And so, you know, again, it's like uh, just because I saw a coyote and I know what coyote medicine typically is, I, I can't place a judgment on it. Right. Or, or, you know, the other day I walked outside onto my deck 
and there were about six or eight crows on my property and my trees right there, you know, 10 feet away from me, just kind of jumping around. Again, that's unusual to have that many on my property at the same time, you know, in approximately the same place. I don't know what it means yet, you know, but, but it means something, but I'm not going to place judgment on it. Right. I've had some ravens who have been very uh, talkative, uh, the last couple of days. In fact, uh, I think it, it was either yesterday or or the day before, um, I had a raven alarm clock. And I had about three or four of them circling over the top of my bedroom, cawing to get me out of bed. I don't know why I needed to get out of bed an hour or two before I planned to get up, but they knew and I just went along with it right mm -hmm. um so and and the thing is i don't have to know why i just have to do there was some reason that i needed to be up okay i got up i did my part <laughs> now if the rest of it right. if i'm supposed to know the rest of it the rest of it will come eventually <clears throat> just like that learning came for you <clears throat> you know later on the following day after you'd gone through and done certain steps, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's it's interesting because um, there's a couple other things that this brings up for me too. On, um, if you remember, you know Joseph Campbell and talking about the her heroic journey, right? You know the hero leaves, gets the guide, goes through all these struggles and everything else. But but one thing that a lot of people uh, forget. This is, is included in there is kind of, you know, eventually the hero returns to home, wherever that is. Mm -hmm. And there's a step where the hero has to share about the journey, right? And bring the learnings of their heroic journey back to their home, to their people, right? And I think a lot of times we forget that, but this falls right into line with what we're talking about of sharing our stories and lessons is one of our responsibilities here on this earth is to go through these experiences, but then to share them as appropriate as well, mm -hmm. right? For all the reasons we talked about before. So other people can learn from our lessons, right? And maybe experience or empathize with things that maybe we're going through just like we can with other people sometimes it's to let people know that they're not alone and that that others are experiencing these same kinds of things um, that they're experiencing when you know 99 percent of the population out there might think you're it's crazy or this thing, you know, <laughs> cannot be right. Which is again, one of the reasons why Brad and I are sharing this because, you know, a lot of people that are, are trying to be more spiritual or tap in or evolve themselves. Um, you know, sometimes they're kind of doing it by themselves. And, um, and that's one of the reasons, like you said, why, why we're sharing. So, mm -hmm. Nope, exactly. Um, and like I said, I, I, to me, it seemed important, again, not only, again, in the, in, you know, for this podcast purposes, but just in, in general with being able to share the experiences that I'm having with my daughter, to be able to share them with my law clients or the people or the other lawyers that I kind of coach or, you know, kind of talk to, um, to be able to to share some of these things with them as well, um, because like you said, that I is you know not we're not here just to have the experiences ourselves, but to be able to I'll share those with others. Um, and you, Joseph Campbell talks about it, and and it, you know it's 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 good to have a reminder of that, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes we kind of get into our own stuff of what's going on. Um, well, and I think it's, it's interesting too, because again, I've had some other tangential things this last month that have brought this particular topic 
to my awareness again, right? So I'm glad that we're kind of talking about it. And and one is, you know, that there's there's a lot of people out there who like to talk a lot. <laughs> and unfortunately, there's not a lot of substance behind what some people say because they're just copying or regurgitating what they've learned in a book or what somebody else has taught them, but they've never really integrated it. They've never really changed themselves. They've never really incorporated those things or gone through those experiences that are necessary to really have you be your authentic or your true self in being able to help other people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somebody told me, they're like, I, I just love the the confidence of a 19-year-old life coach. You know, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, right? And, and you know, again, there's some people that are 18, 19 years old that think that they're a life coach. There's people that are 20 or 30 years old and think they're a life coach. But have they lived? Have they actually experienced a lot of these things? You know, it's pretty hard to to receive guidance from somebody on maybe a long-term relationship issue that you're having with a partner or spouse, if the person you're talking to has never been married or has never had a long-term relationship, right? It's, it's, it's difficult. And unless they have some of those experiences, they can't really share from the, from their true self. And so there's always something hollow about the advice or things that they're trying to share and the problem is karmically that's not good for us either right and so what's what's the best option is to share our experiences our genuine true self those things that we have incorporated or learned right and that's one of the reasons why we usually are sharing like what we're doing we're not telling you what to do. We're just trying to share experiences that we've had. Or like when Brad says, I don't know, I had an insight. I'm like, well, Brad, what does that mean, man? What does that what does that feel like? Right? right. Because it's going to be different to different people, but understanding maybe how Brad receives insight, how I receive insight might help, you know, those of you listening understand better maybe how you are getting the insight. Or it's like, oh. Well, hey, I never, I never realized I've been getting answers all the time. I keep expecting, you know, the heavens to part and the voice of God to come down and tell me. Uh, but I, but maybe I've been getting answers the whole time. Mm -hmm. And and I think too, just the the responsibility. And again, not to not for us to place um, pressure on ourselves or get down on ourselves because I, you know, as myself, it's like, what do I want to share? I don't know. What do I feel passionate about? I don't know. I don't really feel passionate about anything right now, you know, in a lot of ways. And so I just kind of shut up. Right. And, and um, going back to the Tao Te Ching from Lao Tzu, you know, one of the lines in there is, is those who talk a lot have nothing to say. And those who don't talk have much to say that I think it's, you know, important for us to share at the right time, mm -hmm. but not just be, blah, 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 look at me, look at me, look at me, blah, 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 right? But it is important for us to share our learnings and share our experiences, because um, that's kind of part of our contract for coming here too, right? Is So we're experiencing life, People around us are experiencing life, and we're sharing that with others around us, but also with the greater universe as well, as it's learning and, you know, going through this stage of creation as well. Yep. Very true. Yeah. And one of the things like we talked about, you know, awareness is a huge thing. And that's what I think some of these lessons are, you know, that we share are helping for, like you said, it's not that you're necessarily going to experience things the exact same way. You know, you're not going to be having a dream just like I did. And then 
you're going to have an email come to you from that person that was in your dream. And then you're going to be go for a hike and meditate. And on the way out of, you know, you're going to have this insight, like, it, you know, it's, it's likely to not happen that way. But if you can start saying, well, I know that sometimes, you know, dreams, you know, you get a dream and then something else kind of comes afterwards and they seem to kind of be kind of related somehow, like there's something connecting them and, you know, it brings your, your attention to that, your awareness to that now. So maybe you would recognize that or you, you see it happen the next time, or you are, you know, going someplace and you're kind of sitting there and you're like, Hmm, maybe if, you know, being quiet, quieting my mind will, could help me to allow some of these things to come in. You know, we talked about how it's important where your mind is doing the monkey stuff and you go and shout everywhere. It's really hard to hear other things because all you hear is yourself, um, your ego voice. And so maybe if I, I'm a little bit more aware of my ego voice and trying to quiet things. I can let things come through, you know, where I don't force things um, or put judgment on them. Like they're all, a lot of it's just awareness, you know, because that I think is, is really the first step to, to change to, to growth is mm -hmm. becoming aware um, because you can't fix anything, something you're not aware of. Um, and, you know, and, and if you're not, and if you're not, if you don't have an awareness, you're not, you know, cognizant, conscious of something happening, there's no way that you can take steps against it or become mm -hmm. more, like you said, you know, listen to something or do something a little differently or or whatever. Well, and it's um, that awareness, because I've been playing with that a lot recently. Um, and, and in kind of forcing myself to just look at things around me, and try to see what's different or what's unusual, right? So that I become more aware of the things that maybe are a little out of place or seem a little odd, because if something seems a little odd or is a little out of place or seems like a coincidence, it probably isn't, right? Just like Brad, you know, looking at his email, Monday morning, and sure enough, there's an email from this person. You know, that's that's not normal, right? It's not normal for, you know, this for this person to show up in your dreams. Well, you know, taking note of it, uh, becoming aware of it. And you can you can do it in lots of different ways to start to heighten your sensitivity level and your awareness to what's going on. Yeah. So I'll give you some simple examples, right? It's been it's been cold here where, where I live, right? It's been we got a little bit of snow last night and and probably I don't know, 2 weeks ago when it was really cold, right? It was getting down to like 15 at night and maybe 30 during the day, which I know for Brad is nothing. <laughs> but for us it's really cold, right? So here I am, I'm all bundled up in my um you know, heavy hats and coats and everything else going out to the grocery store. Although I'm missing the, the ear flaps today. A little yeah, I'm missing the ear flap. Well, it's right over here on the desk, but yeah, I took them off today. Trying to be, look a little more professional today, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I just got to change up the hats. So people are like, anyway. And the glasses sometimes <laughs> too. It's... Yeah, I don't think I wear the same thing all the time. But anyway, so it's cold, right? So go out to the to the grocery store because need to get a few things and i'm in the grocery store and you know you look around and most people are kind of dressed like i am because it's cold right we come in in the store from our car it's not like they have a coat rack at the beginning where we all take off our coats and hang them up and then we go do our shopping it's an idea coat check. But, that'd be handy yeah coat check um but we so we don't have that so everybody's just wearing what they kind of came in right and so, you know, I, I kind of, again, I, I, I look at people and the way they're acting and try to see things that are a little different. And I was walking down one aisle and I kid you not, there was this woman that was wearing, um, like a tank top, tank top. So she had gone from her house to her car to into the store in a tank top not bundled up, no hat, no nothing. She looked like it was 85 degrees outside. That's interesting. Huh. 
that's something that's out of the normal, right? Why is that? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But if I start to notice things like that, that are a little out of the ordinary and pay more attention to them, a lot of times those are answers or other lessons that we need to learn as well. Right. Yeah. And you could do it in any way. It's the same thing. Even just sitting out on my deck, I've I've noticed we warmed up a little bit, but I'm like, isn't it funny how many people in my neighborhood are in shorts and short sleeve shirts? And it's only 30 degrees outside. This doesn't make a lot of sense. What does it mean? I don't know. I don't have to know what it means. Mm -hmm. Right. At least for now, I'm just you know, learning how to start to notice when things are a little out of the ordinary, because there's probably something to it. Mm -hmm. So when I was hiking on Monday, I didn't really hear any, anim there was really no animals around. There were no birds. There were no other animals. Um, it was pretty quiet outside of like the running water. Um, and as I was walking out, of the area, I noticed a little bird and I didn't think about it until just right now. And it was very shortly after that little bird that I saw, I was like, Oh, hi, little bird. You're kind of cool. You know, that I had this insight. This came to me. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So somebody bringing you a message. Right. And again, it's it's the um, it's it's like that. Right. I mean, it's I mean, it's winter time, but it's it's unusual to go out into nature and not see any birds or any animals or anything. Right. And so, you know, it sounds like you even kind of thought that like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then as you're coming back, you see the one little bird. Right. Well, it was mm -hmm. kind of staged that way on purpose. That bird was bringing you a message. Right. And you were kind of aware of it and could see and realize or recognize that that's what was actually going on at that time. Right. I mean, it's the, you know, and it can be the flip side too, where it's like some days I'll go out and I've got a bird feeder, you know, with some seeds up in it and I'll go out and there'll be 10 or 15 birds right around it, which again is, is not normal. Right. It's 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 normal to have one here or there or a couple come and go. But when you have a whole thing, that's kind of different. Right. Or it's the middle of winter and I still have hummingbirds coming to my hummingbird feeder, uh, even when there's snow and it's iced up. You know, it's like it's a little different because, again, I have this relationship with hummingbirds. They show up all the time to me even when i'm out walking the dog you know we're kind of stopping and all of a sudden i'll hear it i'll hear him right around me you know and um so it's 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 paying attention but then i think like you said it's it's starting to share some of these things with the people you live with the people you love the people you work with you know and and not to go blab it to everybody in the world because not everybody needs to know it Right. Because some of these things are kind of sacred and and need to only be shared with certain people. But, you know, all of us have more to share than we realize. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, some of it is our our own lack of self-worth of thinking, oh, I don't have anything important to tell or to say. Yeah. Who am I? I'm just little Jason. I'm just this normal guy. Um, but I'm not at the same time. Right. And so when I can remember and act on who I really am, I don't have those thoughts and I know exactly what I need to share and when I need to share it with people. Um, and you know, as, as trivial as some of the little things may seem that we're talking about on here, they're so not trivial. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So, <laughs> so if, you're, if you're experiencing things like this and you need someone to share, we would love for you to share them with us 
So please leave us comments, um, leave us reviews, things like that. Um, you can reach out Jason's website and email him, let him know if you've, what, what you've been experiencing. Um, because we love to hear it. Like, like you said, a lot of it is sharing the experiences, allowing others to learn from it and letting people know that you're not alone. Yep. You know, you're not the only one experiencing these things, going through these situations that there are others out there too. Um, and a great way to do that is to find like people, find a community of some sort of people that you can share these things with. Um, and hopefully maybe if we're, we're, if we're lucky, this, this podcast can maybe be that for you. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, don't, don't ever doubt that the stories and experiences that you all are going through that are listening are important. And like I said, that's why Brad and I show up here because again, it's, um, we just want to share what we've learned too. And maybe it'll help some of you also kind of get past some of the humps of trying to do it by yourself. Sometimes doesn't make sense. Like, like this whole thing with, you know, you had an insight. I don't know for how long I was waiting for some voice from the heavens, right? Because everybody's like, I heard this, I heard this, I heard this. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm not hearing anything. What's going on, right? Right. And I hear stuff but like the, saying dead people. Like, what's going on? Yeah, like, but this the, is but, not like the movies say. Come on. like. <laughs> but then I come to find out some of those people who were talking about hearing, they're talking about exactly the same experience Brad just explained here. And I'm like, why'd you use the word here? I don't know. I didn't know about have a better word to use. Be because the stuff that happens happens in a different part of our brain than the part that controls our language. Yep. 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 And that's part of part of the reason. So yeah. So yeah. And like I said, share with us, share with others, you know, share judiciously. Um, but but realize that your experiences that you're having are helping other people around you, um, helping the world as well as helping yourself as well. So, yep, even just a little, a little, a little difference. One person um, can ultimately be a big impact because that person then takes it and they are able to share it and spread it to the people they know, who spreads people they know, and like that's how that's how big things happen. Exactly. So have That's a great week, insight. everybody. That's your That's insight. That's the insight from this week. That's it. Um, and like I said, kind of wrapping some of the stuff together that we've talked about before and and kind of really re, re ascertaining why Brad and I are on here talking each week too. Because uh, we just want to share and, and hope that what we're sharing is helping other people um, that are out there as you're listening too. So. Have a great week, everybody, and we'll see you on the next episode. Catch you then. See you.